Welcome to episode one. That's right, JJ. Episode one of What's Your Favourite? I'm Jack Milner, joined by Lissy Almeida and the incomparable John Jacobs. Um, I'm going to be pulling rank for a change and I'm going to go through what I think was my, for me anyway, personally, the greatest heel turn in the history of professional wrestling. But Lissy, off the top of your head, yeah, I know, right? We saw Hulk Hogan come down and uh, drop the leg, brother, at Bash of the Beach in 96. For you, is that still the best ever? Ooh. Off yes. the top of your head, what stands out? Off the top of my head, when I think of like historical he- heel turns, absolutely. I mean, I know that you beg to differ, which is fine, but okay, definitely. Yeah. Hulk Hogan is the ultimate good guy. The only, I- I'm like foreshadowing here. I hope, but the only way that Hulk Hogan couldn't be in that top spot is if John Cena ever turns heel. That's it. Never going to happen. <laughs> Never. I'm still, you know, that's what kind of got me back out of wrestling in like 2006 because he was being booed seriously. And I came back in about 2005 ish and he's programmed with Angle, I think Jericho first and then Angle second. And he's getting booed against both. And he's still going over clean every paper for the game. This is just a bit weird. This is the push down your throat stuff. So, but it worked. They made a lot of money. So, what do I know? Uh, JJ, top heel turns off the top of your head. Yeah, for me, when the big show turned heel, really thought that was strong when he turned heel. <laughs> is this, are you saying that because this week, I think yesterday was the 20th anniversary of him joining the end of your again? Not that one. No, the, which one? The, the 23rd one. Uh, Smackdown. It was really good. Go back and watch it. For any American views out there, this is called dry British humour, <laughs> where you act with a very deadpan expression and just drop bombs. <laughs> nothing nothing, nothing stood out to me. Nothing no, stands I, out to yeah. me. What no, about Daniel just... Bryan turning heel? In a, 20, was it 2018 he turned on AJ and became the, the, the fickle man? The the world the world's champion was it the world's champion, compost champion that was quite good but WWE standards that was quite good um, yeah I that that did cross my mind I was trying to think of something something Daniel Bryan related that that it was alright didn't wasn't huge I mean Austin like turning was was a really big one but it didn't yeah, really pan out did it yeah. never really panned out The Rock The Rock yeah, in two thousand three The Rocks The Rock didn't turn he just turned up and just started being a bit more horrible yeah. He was still talking um, the same smack. Yeah, big show, 23rd hill turn for me. And looking for, I mean, looking like <laughs> closer to home, are there any that like, you mentioned, listen, you mentioned John, uh, John Cena. Are there any missed opportunities? Because like, it seems like Sammy Guevara, his day's going that way now. <laughs> Look at the eye roll. <laughs> Ladder match next week. Um, no one cares. Do you think Cody deliberately, I mean, it's easy in hindsight, do you think Cody deliberately fended this off knowing he'd be signing elsewhere? I saw this I saw this mentioned elsewhere, like, he's no way he's going to turn heel if he knows he's going to come in as a big star at WrestleMania. I mean, well, he never, I think it's convenient. Sorry. No, go ahead, JJ. And he never really saw himself as a heel or a face, did he? he was always so he the, says, uh, he, Cody's the greatest worker in the business at the minute. Like, Did you see the, the post-Mania press interview? Triple H, his favourite wrestler of all time. I mean... <laughs> he played played rent free and great talks. Shocking. Shocking. So much respect for that guy. He's done so much for the business. Okay, then. Um, all right, well, I'll give you... Well, we'll see if you agree with that. I'm, I've sent you a link to a playlist we've created on our YouTube channel, Mainly Wrestling. You'll find it by uh, pretty much in, in the bio now. And um, we are going to start with an interview... From the Nature Boy himself on the 16th of January, 1998. I'll track it for us all because I'm nice. 1988. Oh, perfect. Uh, you do. Pardon? You said 1998. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Flair has is reforming. We go again with the Horseman. Lex Luger is out. They're down to three. Plus the mastermind, Jane J. Jebbett. And Rick Flair has said he wants Big Barry to be the guy. Barry, and Barry was probably the best uh, top two or three workers in the world at this point. So it makes sense to wrestle all over 87. And the Nature Boy is putting out a come and get me plea on World Championship Wrestling. So let's have a look at that now. 
I love this old the leader of the pack, so the world heavyweight champion, Ric Flair with J.J. Dillon, the horseman. Give it to J.J. right here. Look at the drink. All the intelligent part of this conversation, he leads it away. Oh, he makes me feel so important. You know, one of the questions that I keep getting asked time and time again, what is it really like to be a horseman? Well, if you follow us around this week, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the private jet landing at Midway Airport in Chicago. I'm talking about going down to the Chicago Stadium when General Bruce MacArthur opens the door. And then we walk for the game the between the Boston Celtics and the Chicago Bulls. And over the PA system is saying, hey, Sweetness himself is here today. Walter Payton, people cheering and yelling. John Madden sitting over here. The Horsemen are sitting over here. Tully Blanchard, J.J. Dillon, and the, I said, the world heavyweight champion, Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Even Jim Crockett Jr., president of the company, was there. They even said the American Dream time. was there. But we were definitely, definitely the center of attention and champ. That's what it's all about, being a horseman. I'll tell you like it is right now. There's a lot of unrest around this country when it comes to professional wrestling because a lot of people just have a hard time digesting facts of life. The main one being that Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, Art Anderson, woo, and James J. Dillon are what make the great sport of professional wrestling what it is. We are the not. world champions. That's the bottom line. And I'm next week, the pin. Ninja oh, Boy yeah. and the Entourage, the Four Horsemen, are going to Honolulu. Woo. And you know those little grass skirts. Then we're going to LA and Michael Hayes in Los Angeles. You better pay attention to several important facts. Number one, JJ, myself, Tony Iron are like this with the Los Angeles Lakers, pal. And they're all going to be well, right there, ringside, like when I grab that cheap invitation, that poor man's Ric Flair, and show him why I'm the world champion. Yes, a lot of you out there don't like that, but the bottom line is, Barry Windham, if you like success, if you like money, if you like all the luxuries that life can provide, then pal, woo, you've got to ride in the skies with the big boys and Barry Windham, it's gonna be my personal pleasure to take you away from all those little teeny boppers in their training underwear and line you up with some of the big gals like we had in Chicago last Tuesday night. Chicago, woo! Bright lights, think about it, David. The Wurtz Corporation, the Crockett's, together, side by side, you can own the world, who knows? Rick, one more thing, somebody better send an inner office memo up to Ted and explain to Rick Barry that we're not gonna always go out there and pump the ratings for that basketball <laughs> game like we do wrestling on the Superstation. The bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest wrestling program in the world, and I'm one of the reasons that it is. I'm the world champion, and what comes out of my mouth is as good as gold. Whether you like us or don't like us, woo, learn to love us, because we're the best thing going today. Woo! World heavyweight champion, Ninja Boy Rick Flair. Uh, JJ, you seen that promo before? Never seen it. How good, how good's Rick, man? Honestly. <laughs> Uh, do you know a lot of people have said like, "Look, man, I love your clips, but Nature in twenty twenty two, yeah, just yeah. kind of have to unfollow you. It's a bit weird." Aww. So uh, <clears throat> we hope Rick Flair gets whatever <laughs> whatever help is out there for him. But um, so yeah, the Horsemen have put a plea out, Barry. You're under consideration, which is a bit like I always compare this angle to kind of like a big football team, one of the top four sides going to somewhere like like a Declan Rice. Or uh, Calvin Phillips, Lissy, I know you've just gone blank. <laughs> and they said, like, how about you come and play, come and play Champions League football? I'd rather stay with my own hometown club. And what normally happens is you get told where to go, don't you? Or in wrestling terms, they beat you up because wrestling. So Barry Wyndham has refuted those claims, refuted the Horseman's offer, and that leads to um, him forming an alliance with Lex Luger. 
who has just been kicked out the horseman and they perform. Thank perform. God. Yeah, like, like the horseman in that 87 was a weird year. But they, they headlined the first clash of the champions in Greensboro. What uh, Jim Crockett Moore should put up against the uh, WrestleMania. What's 88 this year? WrestleMania 4? Is that Trump Plaza? Oh, yeah. Yes. That was a really weird tournament, wasn't it? Well, I mean, let's. Uh, what, um, Are you all right? Those, Have you got trauma? Dark, I think those were dark times in, in wrestling. Like, it was weird. Like, I mean, Hulk, Hulk was going off the film, wasn't he? So there's the belt. Yeah, off. like it. There wasn't really like a. Yeah, Hulk was like doing his his Hollywood thing the first the first go round at it, right? And then like that's when like Macho Man had the belt and stuff. And I think that was a good time for Macho Man. And obviously, you know, I love Miss Elizabeth, but yeah. it was like when I go back and I watch stuff from that time, it's like it feels like it doesn't belong like right there. The wrestling particular. is awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, like counting out finishes and just yeah you know, weirdness. Yeah, and again, so eighty seven is you know the, the NWA is WrestleMania. Star Kids eighty seven was when Vince put on Survivor Series for the first time for free and um, put it up head to head with Star Kids. So this was their reaction. WrestleMania four the same day there's Clash of the Champions on TBS, and we're gonna watch now the I suppose the close of the tag team match, which was Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. The World Tag Team Champions against Lex Luger and Barry. No. New Tag Team Champions. That was the 27th of March, I think. They absolutely took the roof off that place, didn't they? Dude, they the it was off. crazy in there. Amazing. I wish that's, I was there. And that's kind of how, um, I suppose, how over Barry was at that point. Barry Lex, went down. But I can't say, I can't not say it like, um, like Dusty Rhodes, unfortunately. <laughs> like a lot of things. I know. No, I say, when I say it that way, I'm saying it like my dad, because like my dad used to love Be- Be- Betty, Betty Windham. He loved him. He thought he, no, when Betty really? Windham came, yeah, Peter, Peter Almeida has been watching wrestling since like the 70s when he came to the US. The OG. Um, oh, yeah. But like, it's so weird to see the difference between this Barry Windham, because this is what, 87? A- and then A- like, what and then about what year was it? Ninety four or so when he went to WWF and they had him be like the stalker of Barry Windham and it's, oh. he was like super creepy. Oh, like talk about times. talk about burying somebody. Dark, dark, dark times. Somebody. Right, we don't need to track this, but the last bit I'm going to send to you, I think I've, I've I don't know if I've seen it already, is <clears throat> a match that happened yesterday. We won't track the entire match, but. Um, if you will humor me, it's uh, I mean, 20 that's minutes. That's what we're here to do this <laughs> entire time. <laughs> JJ and Dreamer, really. Um, this was, yes, it was the 34-year anniversary of um, Aaron and Tully against Barry and Lex Luger on TBS. And uh, you, when you tell me you're ready, I will click play. Have another background. Let's do Wait, it, have, you sent, have you sent this to oh, oh, sent I've literally just got it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay. He's taking longer to add to the um, to add to the YouTube channel because it's like two gig. So okay, I'm ready. Anyway, thank you all for subscribing as well. Just I mean, what 674 subscribers, which is you know big. What's that? <laughs> Lizzie, you've got to give a shout out to Lizzie as well, who had a birthday in the week. Surely, who had a birthday? Who, Lizzie? What? Queen Liz. Oh, oh my god, I never call her that. We call her Her Majesty around here. Oh, sorry, right. I do 96 apologize. years young. God bless the queen. God save the queen. God save the queen. Long live John the queen. John Jacob, you are, you are not going to put such treasonous actions on this podcast. Oh, my God. John, John, what are your thoughts on the monarchy? Tell us how you really feel. The fucking waste of taxpayers' money. Enough about Jay Lethal. What do you think about the Queen? What do you think about Sa- I can't say his name, Sam Nit Singh before we before we go any further? What? Sam what's Nick what's the big the big Indian dude called? Sam Oh that guy, fucking hell. Just I mean the anticlimax of my virginity that it really was. 
No, they did the lights out, lights on, and everyone was like, who the who? fuck is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a big one. Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> it's just, um, it's, uh, it's a great car, Lee Mark too, but he's got some, uh, I don't know, some sporting pedigree or something. Did I mean, I'm sure he could move better if he was a basketball player, but it doesn't seem like he's got too much in-ring skill. I don't know. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Did you see TK going on to Twitter to defend it and saying that? Look, some guy with 30 years' experience said he was fine in the book, it means, so it's kind of on him. I did not and see AW, AW bot just keeps saving all these tweets and saving these coked out TK tweets for when it all goes tits up in 10 years. So. Coked out TK tweets. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, that's a, at AW bot just on Twitter. Nothing to do with me. I'm just literally oh. the base and repeating what they're saying. Wait, send me their page. I need to see. Calling Her Majesty a slag. What? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what? What the hell? What is happening? <laughs> right, let's stick to wrestling. Are you yeah, ready? let's stick to wrestling. Jeez. I mean, four kids. Uh, good so. I mean, she likes a little bit. Anyway, we're going to click play <laughs> in three, two, one. Oh, and you will see the most <laughs> glorious horseman jackets in the ring. I have been trying to find some of them for a good 12 months. I need this jacket. It's the, it's, it's the blue one. Is Anne in the blue? I think Tully's in the Oh, that blue. Tully's, Tully's in the blue. Oh. Thing of beauty. I need that jacket. It's so cute. A very dapper-looking JR and a very young-looking Teddy Longmer. Oh, I didn't even clock that. Teddy, that was Teddy Long Reffin, yeah. This is I really love cool. Teddy with his little hair. He's so cute. What do you call that? Is it called like a scullet? I'm, I mean, when, when you grow it out the back. That's what Paul Heyman used to have, right? Paul Heyman. Clinging out. on is what it's called. Yeah. Oh, You're not that far away from it, Jack. I'm just chip it off this year. I said, when, when the boy you. gets more hair than me, I'm going to chip. <laughs> it's like a rite oh, of passage. So next year, <laughs> three months. Three months. <laughs> the line, the line is yeah, the line is about four and a half months. <laughs> and Anne is rocking the I'm the uncle that can kick your ass if you start misbehaving at the family. Uh, the family do. Wait, but also Arn Anderson was younger than us here. <laughs> <laughs> Arn with the blonde is, is, is there's some serious drip on him. He was going through a phase where he'd be on TV with a medallion at this point as well, and it is just mwah. the gold the are on his neck, right? The chain. So the what? Are you talking about his chain? The big sovereign, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the the key to this match here, they're in Tampa, which is I think the Tampa Fairgrounds. Barry is obviously the son of Black Jack Mulligan, the protege of Dusty. Horned his scales in the um, in the Florida Territory. Florida is wrestling country. I've got a message from the missus from the other room saying, the boy already has more hair than you anyway. <laughs> nice to know you're listening, darling. Thank you. Save it. <laughs> Thank you, Lorraine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I cooked a nice roast dinner here. Slow cooked beef all day. It was cleaning all day. And I'm still getting shade thrown on me. <laughs> anyway, this is in Tampa. This is the home. Barry's home. He's moved from Sweetwater, Texas, and he's a Florida boy now. And they love him. All the ladies will be crying. Uh, I don't know. All the ladies come over him. He's, he's their boy. Barry's like 27, 28 here as well. Jesus. They all look so fucking old. Um, so this is like their first title defence, right? I mean, like... Is, is yeah. Right? They, they just first won one the on TV, and the yeah. last one. Okay, right, right, right. Okay. And... He's so good. Just look at him. Like, he just sells the shit out of everything. I love him so much. I just love watching Arn and Tully. I and do. And you know, before before we started this, I, I've probably maybe seen one match of them in my in my life. But really, so good to watch. Yeah, my my knowledge of eighty stuff was just well was non-existent. I'm getting an education now. I know so, you're getting a proper education now. Oh, such a good job to hold. But yeah, on on so they lost about three twenty seven. Uh, which is what Classic Champions is Sunday. Mm. The next three weeks, JJ's come on TV saying, Barry, you can't trust Lex. 
You can trust him. He, When you need him, he won't be there for you. Come and join us. You know, fair enough, you beat us fair and square. We think you could do so much better than, than Lex. Come and join us. Nothing to worry about. It's like playing devil's advocate. And JJ during this match is just, just super. I miss, I miss old fashioned eighties wrestling managers that were just a little bit slimy. Just you cannot trust them. We don't have enough management today. And like, even when you're a manager, like they'll take like a wrestler and make them somebody's manager type of situation. Like true managers. I mean. We know Bobby is the best. And M- I, MV- I was going to say, modern day MVP was brilliant with Lashley. Yes, yes, he was. You know, Lance Dyer is like almost like his agent or his manager. If you want to put him like a modern day sports or athlete, yeah, yeah, it's a good fit. But there's any no one else I can't really. Tully with FTR didn't really work. He's got Dan Lambert doing bits. But I thought um, I was going to say Cyrus uh, Don Callis with Kenny Omega was brilliant as well. Really yeah. good. Really, really good. You mentioned actually um, Dan Lambert there, JJ. How bad a Sammy and Ty that they've turned Dan Lambert baby face? Uh, I know. Yo, uh, that. <laughs> like, not, when the sorry. crowd is cheering Dan Lambert for, like, all of the wild and outlandish shit that he says, you know. I mean, that is, but that's what we want, right? He's literally come in to go AEW shit. And so all the AEW fans... I mean, it's just, wank off in the they basement. They should yeah. boo him, but he, they, uh, they're, they're that bad and that annoying that he still get booed. Um, I mean, is it, is it Mark uh, Sterling? Is that his name, Jade's manager? Yeah, yeah. An atomic drop. No, don't say enough of those. He's. I think he's really good. Underrated. I enjoy um, his stuff. Oh, actually. Not he, doesn't, he doesn't add to anything, he's, does he? Like, she just tell him to fuck off. He doesn't do much for me, yeah. to be honest. He's the same with the I guy. Like, I don't know the guy with Andrade. And the worst one, right? Alex Abrihantes looks like just a mascot dressed oh. cosplaying with Dungeons and Dragons. He needs to go. What is happening? Like, that needs to stop. It literally looks like he went to an iParty store. I don't know if you guys have that there. It's like just a party favor shop. Like okay. you buy costumes and stuff you there. You buy a fancy dress shirt, costume. Yeah, uh, like he shirt, literally yeah. looks like he went to eye party and bought that cape and whatever, and that's what he's wearing out to the ring these days. It looks crazy. It's just, it's just, you can get, you can be a bit daft in wrestling, but when you go too far, it looks really bad. Yeah, I and mean, I mean, like I, I love like Penta. Oh. You know what though? Can I tell you actually for you what it, for what's actually happening with the whole butch situation they're doing that little like where's butch thing going on i think it's catching on a bit i i saw the last couple of weeks for wwe to be honest what'd you say jj i said i've not really been paying attention last couple of weeks for wwe i don't think i've seen anything since wrestlemania like i've been following along a little bit but i don't know what's happened this week yeah it's been a little bit out of the loop it's slow um it's that a little mania slump, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can, you you can't keep building from there. They have to like scale it back and then start yeah. to build, rebuild storylines. Like, I mean, the backlash card is not like super. I mean, WrestleMania backlash. Yeah, Wrestle. Sorry, what? <laughs> call it WrestleMania backlash. I just want to call it backlash. It's it was perfectly fine the way it was. Backlash is one of my favorite pay-per-views. Is it in my like? Do be a fandom. I'm thinking like 99, 2000. The one that had like the winging. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Harry Windham is 27 years old here. It's just insane. How how old is Anne? Must be like the same age. It's probably like 30. I mean, Anne Anderson would be 40 for 40 for whatever. Anne is Anne is 29 here. If you told me he was 45, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. (laughs) Would not. Would not. Wouldn't even bat an eye. No. Look at him. If you don't, I mean, I guess you don't listen. Arn's podcast is really good. He said, so Arn wrestled between all, mainly at the top gate, top level, 85, 86 through to like 96. Mm. The two most naturally gifted wrestlers he's ever been in a ring with, Barry Windham and Dustin Rhodes. Like, the natural. Like, Dustin is the natural, but I thought he had a great match with Punk as well last week. Oh, I really enjoyed fantastic. that match. He's, I think he's probably one of the most underrated wrestlers ever like 
You think Wait, about more underrated than Chad Gable. Everyone knows that Chad Gable is amazing, so it's not really underrated, <laughs> is it? If you if you think about the attitude era, right? He was just like one of those guys that was just there, sort of like hardcore Holly or Val Venus or something. He was never like the WF mid card of the, of of the 90, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Godfather, just, Godfather wrote a big, big right hand for Barry. Man is 53 years old. Like, we cannot let that escape us. It's so yeah. impressive. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, he doesn't wrestle that much, but every time he's in the ring, just always puts on an incredible performance. You, you can yeah. kind of tell a bit like for the younger generation now of the punks this world and you'd say for the, the younger wrestlers, people wrestling like him or Christian, it's like it's like a bit of a take off for some of those guys. Like I want to work with Big deal. Him, yeah. You know. For sure. You guys excited I'm just, about the, the point uh, is we're not gonna see we're not gonna see Bret Hart in AW. That's that's really, that's really not? disappointing. Is that a thing? Are we not? Vince has basically just wait, got the did money you out. I sent it I sent it to you guys. I don't remember if it was on Instagram or Twitter. We have entirely too many group chats going, just saying. Um and it's you sending yeah. them me replying JJ ignoring. <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's the two of us and JJ just pops in when he when he wants <laughs> to. Busy life. <laughs> Playing poker at CEO houses. Any poker last night, JJ? Yes. Successful? No. Nope. We'll he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> How it's much did you lose? No, fifty quid. I was down five hundred at one point and I've recovered. So Get it back. I'm not. Let's go. I'm not complaining. Let's, tell us the hand. There was lots of hands. All oh, right. Okay. You just grinded <laughs> this. Okay. Yeah, it was. You stayed sober anything. than everyone else. No, I, I, I was, <laughs> I was probably the drunkest one. Oh. To be honest. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, don't know what to say. But yes. Anyway, at least he sent a message, which was basically, if you saw, it was Dax Howard saying Saturday mood. Right. Okay. Um, and, it, and it was kind it, of leaked that oh that tag was brilliant. Oh, that was. Gone, it was leaked that. Um, basically, Brett's got a deal with. Big power slam by Lex. Um, Brett's going to deal with the WF and he's going to maybe do another book and a few documentaries. And he's basically going to earn a lot of coin for not a lot of work. I think. A fair play to him. But I mean, thought it might have been that, that there might have been some issue with Martha not wanting him there because they don't really see eye to eye, do they? And obviously she, she's involved. With no, but they were gonna, they, no, they were going to. Well, Brett was obviously going to endorse the Owen. Right. Okay. And he was going to manage FDR. So. Yeah. That's a shame. So I think they've got they've got a house show on the I think next month where it's um, that, yeah. FTR with Brett against uh, what's he called Brock Anderson and Brian Pelman Jr. I'm yeah. gonna try to go, guys. Oh, the team is so right. good. It's in my backyard. It's in I think it's in Webster, Mass. So it's not like you're gonna super fly to far. Boston for it. You're gonna fly. Well, no, I'm probably gonna be in town that weekend anyway. So why not? You might have been pushed away by then. Huh? You might have been pushed away. Imagine this in three months, Simon Liss is not allowed on the podcast. <laughs> Can't get it approved by the Fed. <laughs> First of all, a big I, money will always, deal I will always be on are, this are podcast. You're going to be like podcast. Bruce Pritchard with somebody the rest of the I'm going to go back provided I can carry on with my podcast obligations. Yes. This is my top priority. Well, so that's that really was... this point. I used, to li- I used to listen to something the rest of religiously. It got me back into wrestling in 2018. But ever since he went back up, up north, it's just north. the up north. Oh, look at JJ Dillon get involved. Look at it, look at it. And, and he just always goes JJ. for the tie. Dirty JJ. The worst of the JJs, I would say. <laughs> oh. But also, wait, JJ Dillon looks, today he looks the same age same as he day. looked here. Yeah. Like, think... he aged all at once and then just stopped. <laughs> By the way, so I don't know if you two have got commentary on, but in this area... JR and Tony are brilliant together. They are much better now here in 88 than they are in, say, 2022. I was going to say, better than now? Well, Tony doesn't really say anything, does he? He just, like, throws shade at MJF. And <laughs> he says, hates him. That's exactly right, JR. He's like, he is a terrible person. <laughs> he hates him so much. JR music, just gets angry music. when they don't adhere to tag team rules. Yeah. <laughs> The funniest one of those was, you know, that um, 
the Tornado Tag Team cage match with the Bucks and... Um, oh, it was chaos. Yeah. Right, and it was a Tornado Tag, so they're all in the ring at the same time. It's like 10 minutes into it, and he's just like furious that they're not tagging it out. It's like, Jim, that's, that's not the rules this time, mate. <laughs> he didn't realise for the first 10, 15 minutes. God bless we, him. We, we love the guy forever. It's okay. I know. Listen to the crowd, though. You've got, you got two super over baby faces, two dastardly heels, heel manager. Exactly. Like wrestling so simple when you... Um... I feel like Tully Blanchard is in that bucket of just... If you could design a heel from the ground up, like, he has everything. And he's so much better as a heel. I would never have wanted to see him, like, be a good guy ever. Tully joined... Um... So, again, without boring you with history, so Tully's dad, Joe Blanchard, had um, he had the territory out in West Tully from um, San, San Antonio. So He's actually born in Canada, I think. I know, but his, his dad, Joe Blanchard, ran the, the San Antonio territory. Yeah, 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 yeah. When his dad died, he kind of had to run it, and it went tits up. He closed it down. And when he came back to Crocky in 84, he came in as a heel. And then he never went babyface ever again because he was just good. good at being a heel. <laughs> good. He's so good at it. Well, he was. And Al and he said, was it was, he said, like, whenever they go anywhere, Tully would just annoy people so much. He was so smug, that, that cocky, on, like, huh? smirking, yeah. I feel like back then, though, you really, I mean, not, it's, it's just so different now. The business was so protected back then, like, they really took it so seriously. Like, obviously we know they would travel together. They were, you know, if you're in public, you're acting a certain way. Like, obviously there was no social media. Oh, this is a human being and he has a family at home or whatever, but it is what it is. I mean, there'd be riots, wouldn't they? Like in the, you look at some of the territories like the eighties, I was watching a video in the week, which was like Ernie Ladd against, uh, or someone, what's the guy, Ox Baker, the guy with the big, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like starting a riot in Mid South because someone thought he killed Ernie Ladd by with his heart. I get the heart punch, and he just kept dude, doing it after the bell. Dude, it's like when like Sergeant Slaughter was getting like death threats at his home, and people would like follow him and stuff. It's like okay, guys, it's wrestling. Like this is they're still a human being. <laughs> like, real to it. It's not that serious. You're not gonna go kill them. They're having a hell of a match, eh, by the way. They are. I'm sorry. Let's get back. Let's get back into the ring. So it's this is so long Barry. The, uh... Barry was a tag team champion in the WWF in '85 at the first WrestleMania with Betty. Mike Rotundo. Mike Rotundo. Who's obviously the who's his IRS. I'm thinking is he his brother or brother-in-law or cousin? So IRS. Brother. Mike Rotundo is the dad of Bray Wyatt. I know Barry Windham is the the uncle. Of yeah. Bray Wyatt, who is what Wyndham Rotundo, the two families, Correct. yeah, because his dad is there's Jack another Mulligan. son, there's another son, Bo Dallas. Put some respect oh, on his you know name. What? I, well, I've, I, was out, I was out with the game during that time, so I don't know who Bo Dallas okay. is. He was, I know so the good. name. Hmm? I remember him in NXT, he was NXT champion for a bit, right? And I was like, this guy's gonna be so fucking good and then they just did nothing to with see him them. yeah they did oh. nothing with him i would have loved to see them as like a, a tag team or like him join in you know i know the wyatt, when, family. Like, the wyatt family like with luke harper and um eric I'm missing a hell of an angle by the way so lex oh, is down lex is down he's just we'll, very we'll talk about this century later very secretly bladed not so it won't very sly oh and you've got JR selling it like he just died. So this dead. is Lex letting him down when he most needs him. Yes, yes. See, JJ, you're just so smart. You just connect the dots. I'm like, on you it. Know the it. mastermind. Yeah. Yes. Barry goes for a tag. Nobody's there. Oh. 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 Look at you JJ. let him down. JJ. Damn it, Lex. I told you this would happen. I told you this would happen, Baz. It's bad, Baz. I can't bear it. Listen to the commentary again. Selling brilliantly. I don't have the sound on. I messed up my audio channels and yeah, same. Don't, don't have anything. But they're, so they're going over. Relying on you, over, Jack, to relay. Yeah. Jack, why don't you track it? Last two minutes. 
because we'll Missing get pulled down for copyright. <laughs> tremendous idea. I have a good idea like once a week. So if that's the one that I got, then we're all right. Let me just go back. And then we have new World Tag Team Champions, Tully wow. and Arn Anderson. And they're Tully Blanchard. in shock. I appreciated how Arn did like the exact same like uh, massive leap when the, the three so very, counted as, as when the titles. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Proper shit out. <laughs> 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 like he just scored the winner in a cup final. Yeah, love that. But yeah, just JJ henpecking him throughout the entire the entire match and then but, uh, JJ, how did you know? Like, how did you know? That You're just like the professor. Anyway, so it, in episode one of what, 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 a couple of the time, what's my favorite? <laughs> Nothing will ever top that ever. <laughs> JJ, so that's the first time you said, what do you make of it? Because you're always slightly yeah. skeptical of my 80s choices. I thought it was good. I, I expected it to sort of um I expected it to sort of go a little bit longer, right? But I guess we we're, we're seeing this over the course. We we we're seeing like twelve minutes worth of, of stuff condensed down from like three months worth, right? So, but yeah, I thought it might have been might have been dragged out a little bit longer. It's twenty minutes. Like, yeah, no, I I know what you're saying, but I like so he's abandoned him in, in that, but not abandoned him like accidentally abandoned him kind of thing. I thought it might have been like okay, he wins here, but then the he next time. Him. There's, there's another one and then yeah then well I'm, I mean I've, I'm not gonna lie I've made I've kind of made the playlist in the last half hour so maybe for the next one I might add a flesh it out a little bit. no it's difficult as well to like find the exact clips and stuff like that you want to show but yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I, I thought we had the clips already in like our mainly wrestling YouTube channel and we didn't so I've had to go mm. back and upload them all one by one so I tried well, it was good I like the format and I think you've done well love that We'll do more of that next time. Lissy, what do you make of the Lissy. angle? Um, I, I love a good heel turn. I think I always rooted for the bad guys growing up. I mean, you know that I love growing Shawn up Michaels. and as a lady. I up until today. Oh, am I a lady? Oh, oh wow, I'm a lady. Cool. Um does but is that better than the Hulkster coming down and dropping the leg on the macho man? I I it's right. It's hard to put into words how over Barry Windham was in Florida at that time. In 96, people were already booing Hulk. Like, if you watch Nitro in 1996, he's getting booed every week. But he's just the ultimate good guy. That's all I'm saying. But, but I think it's for Barry me. Never no, been but, heel before as well. Yeah, but, but like Hulk Hogan was the face of wrestling, period. That's true. So I think I, that's I just, what it is. The, the reason why I really like AEW is because they drop, like, they plant seeds and you can kind of follow them. Like, for the CM Punk MJF dog collar match, they've they've dropped a few, like, um, clues along the way. As mentioned Piper in Portland and Punk's going to go back to his past. I like the fact when they, you start trying to follow it. And I don't think we kind of get enough of that these days. I, I, I mean, the attitude here was just mental because it was just... Swerve, bro. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> Vince Russo ruined wrestling. Period. He wow. tried to. I mean, and he was my, there for like the most successful period in, in the in the company's history, right? He was there for the biggest loss-making time period in any professional wrestling company ever when going to WCW 99. Yeah, that's, that is also true. JJ, yeah, do, you, do, you, JJ that, do you want to watch some WCW Nitro from 2000? Absolutely no, not. Absolutely no. not. That was the worst booking in history. Like, I, it, it's painful to watch. I was watching, it ends the same way every week. Well, this past, I watched the one from this past week, and it was the reset where they took all the titles from everyone. And you have Bischoff going up to Sid Vicious going, Hey, Sid, where's your scissors? And the crowd's like, blank. Because Sid got fired in 93 because he stabbed Dan Anderson in a drunk fight. And they're using all these insider terms like, are you ribbing me, brother? And the crowd's just like silent. No one will, because no one would know. If no one knows, today, nobody cares. I'm trying to suspend my disbelief. Just give me some wrestling. <laughs> yeah, but like if that happened today, obviously people would know because things get out, right? Like back then it was... <sighs> The hell you had to, we had like one wrestling magazine that you could read some stuff but and he's not still in really. yeah exactly yeah. so 
Anyway, that was, my, that was my favourite heel turn of all time. In episode two... Good job. We'll, we'll prefer this better next time. We'll give you your favourite something. We'll come up with it next week. All right. Favourite... We, I don't know whether you favourite member of the monarchy, JJ. <laughs> don't say Prince Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! And on that note, Meghan, we'll finish here. Meghan, Goodbye Meghan from Markle. me. Goodbye from them. Ta-ra.